Hey everybody, I'm on tonight because last night, how is everybody doing, whoever's joining in now? My name is Vanessa Wilson, I'm the Crafty Gemini. If you're not familiar with my work or my YouTube channel, check me out at the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel. And I post instructional video tutorials on all kinds of stuff. So I decided to do, hey Pat, I decided to do another live stream tonight. And let me know if you all can hear the air conditioning going. If it's a little too loud, then I'll, I'll shut it off. But you can let me know in the comments below. Uh, I decided to do another one. Because for those of you that joined in yesterday or last night, I did a live stream and it disappeared off of Facebook. I thought it was maybe taking some time to like upload and post since it was like 30 minutes long, but it never posted. So if you tuned in yesterday, you got 30 minutes of that live stream. If you missed it yesterday, we're here again today. I'm not going to repeat the stuff from yesterday, but we're going to kind of switch it up and do a little something different. Uh, I'm doing a giveaway tonight. For those of you that have been following me on social media this week, you probably know that I have been First of all, waiting for my new fabric collection, Kinfolk, whoop, to come in, and then cutting the bundles that we pre-sold. We're pretty much sold out right now. So um, this is my new collection that features 11 different black and white prints, super cute. And we'll go over these in a little bit because what I'm giving away tonight is a scrap bag full of all the off cuts from when I'm cutting down the things if something's a little bit crooked or there's extra and I just cut and cut. And this is one of those... Um, jumbo zip bags and I'll show you I mean there's some good sized chunks in here okay so I'm gonna be giving away this grab bag of um, scraps from my new collection you can see there's some hot pink in here and this was uh, there's scraps in here from the quilts that I made for quilt market featuring this new collection so it's I mean it's it's more than a pound of fabric for sure there's salvages in here for those of you that like to work with salvages. But we'll do that giveaway at the end of the live stream tonight. Hey, Nicole, go ahead and leave me a comment below because I always love to see where y'all are tuning in from. So I'm in North Central Florida, just north of Gainesville, Florida. And then let me know in the comments where you all are from. So we can kind of see. I love to see people from different countries and stuff. Yesterday we had a lady from Mexico saying hi. Oh, you're talking about my shirt? Yeah, this is a little Crafty Gemini t-shirt. I cut some of them up and use them as I, I can't work out at the gym with like uh, um, necklines up here and like super long sleeves so I just cut it all off hey Kathleen what's up Debbie I see some familiar faces and names for sure <laughs> hey Miss Karen Ooh, Omaha Nebraska hey Laura Terry's in awesome some people from Missouri, Mississippi, Arkansas, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Nebraska. I love this jersey in the house. What's up, Sandra? South Mississippi. Yeah, the weather here has is, is been stormy for sure. It's been raining all night. Um, actually, the lights have been flickering on and off as I've been cutting fabric in here. So I'm like, those of you that were in my quilt club, you know I, we are no strangers to the electricity getting cut off in the middle of a live studio cam. So uh, if the power goes out, I will try to get back on. Hey, Marilyn from Texas. Awesome. Hey, Dale. She says her kinfolk fabric is on the way. For those of you that pre-ordered either the fat quarter bundle, half yard, or one yard bundles, uh, as soon as it ships, you will get an email notification with the tracking info and all that stuff. So those of you that are saying it's on its way, it's obviously because you probably have gotten an email letting you know just that. The last ones to go out are the fat quarter bundles. Um, and I still have some half yard bundles to bundle up and then all the fat quarter bundles, but I hopefully will be done in the next day or two. All right, New Hampshire, wowzers. We have a ton of people here, Northern Cali. Hey, Carolyn. All right, so for today, I wanted to um, go over a couple fabrics. Last night, I did talk about some of the things that I found at Quilt Market, and I'm just going to re-pull out some of the stretch knits because what I have an idea to do here is I've pre-washed some garment sewing fabrics, mostly knits. I love stretchy stuff. When you have curves, you need stuff that's, you know, forgiving and can stretch and you can move in it and stuff like that. So, uh, some of the new knits that I got, these are from Carolyn Friedlander's new collection, Blake. And a lot of the quilting or the fabric manufacturing companies are coming out with their, their collections, meaning just like the design and the prints on the fabric in different substrates. And by substrates, I mean like the different types of fabrics. So for quilting cottons, 
we kind of already know what it is like, right? This kind of stuff. Kind of a medium weight cotton, just woven fabric. And some people use quilting cottons for clothes. Some people stay away. So it's, you know, a lot of it is per preference as well, how you like your stuff to fit you or how drapey you want your fabric to be. Well, a lot of the companies now are printing their same collection, but on different types of fabric. So this is um, Carolyn's, let me see which this, what this one is called, if it has a name for the specific design, because it's like a, an all over. It's just as Blake. So this one is blue lines on a white background. Do you see how cute that is? Very modern and fresh looking. And I got two yards of this, and this is 95% uh, cotton five spandex, I want to say. Oh, this is called Crosshatch Stratosphere, is the name of this actual print. And you can see it's by Carolyn Friedlander for Robert Kaufman. So for cute t-shirts, t-shirt dresses, there's two yards in here, that's plenty. I can make myself a t-shirt and then even a little dress for my daughter from that. And then another one, this abstract kind of orange and blue, again from the Blake line, Robert Kaufman, okay? And the same thing, another jersey, cotton and 95.5, and, uh, 95, 95 cotton, 5 of the stretch. Now, not all of those 95% cotton, 5% spandex are created equal. So if you stretch it and it just like stays there, that's a no-no. Don't grab that fabric. All right. Let me grab a drink. Um, somebody was asking, ooh, the comments are going by so fast. Sue was asking, what will you make? Girl, I have no idea. You know, I feel like there's two different types of people that buy fabric. Either you have the project in mind and then you buy the fabric, or you see the fabric and it sings to you and you're like, I have no idea what you will become, but I gotta have it. And that's kind of how I work. I see the fabric and then I'm like, mm, I'm sure I'll figure something out, and then I just get it. <laughs> Sue's asking if I got this at a quilt store. I didn't. I got this at a trade show. So this is actually never before been seen fresh it's not even out yet like the quilt shops you can't even buy this stuff yet i think it comes out now in july but when you go to the trade show this is basically um it's not open to the public it's just industry-wide for quilt shop owners to show up and see what's new what new fabrics are out new gadgets and tools and gizmos and machines and all, everything in the industry and um they place orders uh, or, or they can buy it there you know some sample type stuff that people have and you get to see what's coming out next. So this, I believe they said, was coming out in July. So if you like it, be on the lookout. And then those of you that know that I design fabrics for Timeless Treasures fabrics, actually the sister company of Timeless Treasures is called Dear Stella. Give me some hearts there if you have heard or seen Dear Stella fabrics. Super cute, whimsical, gorgeous, gorgeous um, fabrics and prints and collections. And I, um, they, they don't print in so many like substrates like some of the other companies like Robert Kaufman. You know, there's companies that print on gauze, like double gauze fabric and sateens and twills, like all these different types of weights and kinds of fabrics. But uh, Timeless Treasures and Dear Stella have some similar knits. So 95% cotton, 5% spandex. And you can see, you see how it just bounces back? It's like super springy. This is the kind of stuff you want to see. But how cute is this little print? I mean, it looks a little feminine and a little girly, but I could totally rock a t-shirt made out of this, right? So, super cute. I got some of this. Hasn't been pre-washed yet, which is something that, oh, as a quilter, I need to adapt to because I'm one of those quilters that does not pre-wash anything. Unless it's like a batik. Andra, are you there, Andra? <laughs> she loves batiks. Just kidding, she hates them, but um, I hardly ever work with batiks, but if it's something that looks like a burgundy or a navy blue and it doesn't have white, like on the back of the fabric, um, I will typically pre-wash it, but I mean, that's like never. So look, how bouncy is that? Isn't this amazing? So this is another Dear Stella print. Look how cute. Okay. Mirari's asking if there's any fashion fabrics for my line. No, not yet. I've kind of put the bug in their ear about it because I would love to see some of my black and white ones in, in this kind of substrate, this kind of um, a jersey, you know, this cotton jersey, 95.5. This would be super hot. Even for like loungy pants, t-shirts, t-shirt dresses would look super cute. Now this is one from Timeless Treasures. 
same. You know, I told you all there were sister companies. How cute would these look for like leggings, something loungy? Look at that. <laughs> Super funky. But again, that nice stretch and the nice kind of stretch return, that bounce back, right, that you get from this. Let me see if it says it down here. It's just like. I don't have the actual name on it. It just is um, CS4623 is the number on this. CS4623. So yeah, another. Isn't that cute? Paula says she loves that. <laughs> it does. It does have um, the spandex in it. Okay. Let me see. Ooh, so Dottie's asking if I have a favorite t-shirt pattern. This is a good question because um, for those of you that don't know, I host some retreats here in Florida. And last month, we had Miss Susie Brown who came from California. She's a Palmer Pletch uh, certified fit instructor. And we used uh, a pattern by Pamela Leggett called the perfect t-shirt pattern. And let me see if I can get it for you actually. Hold on. Because I think I have one here somewhere close by that I can grab. So this is called the perfect t-shirt pattern and it's by Pamela Leggett and if y'all don't know her, I've never met her in real life but I talked to her on the phone when I was ordering the patterns for the retreat. The lady is like the nicest lady on earth, seriously. She has a class on Craftsy with, I mean, ridiculous amounts of information. Super good. And um, so this one is the one that we made at the retreat. So if you were following me on social media when we posted pictures at the retreat, we all made our tops. Obviously, depending on your bus size, you can choose to put a dart or no dart. And it was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And we use a really nice rayon jersey for it. And it worked out really nicely. So we like this one. So yeah, so that's the one that we used. The perfect t-shirt. Now, I have been playing around with a couple different patterns. And going forward, I feel like I'm going to be doing more reviews. I'm trying to kind of find this balance between doing tutorials and online classes. And then still, because this is my business, still making time to sew for fun. So what I have decided to do partly is to kind of pick patterns and research and find cool patterns that I want to try for my own self. And then I'll turn those into like video reviews or something, kind of give you all the feedback like this definitely did not work for me or this one was a good one and stuff like that. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you all are interested in and seeing my take on some of these patterns going forward. Um... Another pattern actually that I just picked up, I know I'm super late to the game, but these are super hot ginger jeans. Um, my friend Carla Lisa told me about these at a retreat last year, the year before, I can't remember. And I finally ordered it. Everybody swears by these and like curvy girls. So I'm like, okay, because you know, sometimes you see the stuff online and you're like, yeah, well, I don't really look like that girl in the picture wearing those. So I don't know how they will be on me. But, um,. I've seen all kinds of body types rocking these ginger jeans. And these are by Closet Case Files, this pattern is. Um, I think they have a PDF version of it, but I just, I'm one of those people that like, I can't read books on a tablet or nothing. I need to have the magazine or the book in hand. So again, for a lot of these patterns, I prefer to have the hard copy pattern, okay? Um, so yeah, they're called ginger jeans, and it's a skinny jeans pattern. But of course, Carla Lisa, my friend, I don't know if she's on here or not, she makes literally, she shows up to a retreat, she's like, I made this, I made this. The next day you see her, she's like, I made this, I made this. We have like a pajama party, and she's like, I made this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like everything she wears. So she has tested like every single pattern on the planet, and um, I trust her word. So these are supposed to be super hot. Thanks, Debbie, for posting the link to Pamela's perfect t-shirt pattern. Uh, the, the pattern line on that one is Pamela's Patterns, so you can check it out. Okay? And then... Let's see. Awesome. Thanks, Shanika. Yeah, she says there is a PDF version of this one, too, and she loves reviews. Awesome. All right, so that's that one. And then, on the other hand, I also got my friend Angela Wolf's jean pattern. I mean, there's a ton of jeans patterns out there. But um, this one is a bootcut jean. This one is the ginger jeans or skinny jeans, and this is a bootcut one. And I've included a link here, like in the title or in the description thing of this video, um, she's offering Crafty Gemini fans a 10% uh, coupon code. 
So I've included it there for you if you want to check it out. And I think it's 10% off whatever you get on her site. Oops. And I see that there is a typo in it. The, the code should be Crafty Gemini 10. Not Craft Gemini 10. Clearly I can't type. But I will fix it once this is done because I can't edit it now while this is live. But this is her boot cut pattern. It goes from sizes 0 to 16 on the back. And I like that it comes in a booklet. It's like those cookbooks, you know, instead of having to hold the page open, you can actually swing it back around and hold your spot so you can go step by step. And there are pictures that she has in here and some illustrations as well. So check that out. Her stuff doesn't come on the thin tissue paper. It comes on white paper. So it's thicker. You can make your marks. You can cut. And then obviously you can fold it back up, um, you know, once you make your changes and things like that. And she actually has a jean sew along going on right now. So if you didn't catch uh, our chat that I had with her, I did a, an interview live with her this week for her Entrepreneur Insight uh, live video show. She, um, she's been doing these live streams on YouTube, I mean, excuse me, on Facebook, and um, she's doing a jean sew along. So if you go to her page, Angela Wolf, uh, and check it out. You'll see her going through all the different things. I was watching one the other day where she was showing the fitting on a mannequin and things like that. So super cool stuff. So those are two jeans patterns that I'm checking out right now and seeing when I can find some time to make them. But if any of you have tried either of these patterns, I would love, love, love to hear from you. So go ahead and post a comment uh, below the video here and let me know which one you've tried. Or maybe if you have a favorite jeans pattern that you want me to try out and maybe review or something, uh, let me know because I'd love to check something like that out. Um, working on some of the other knits. Let me start moving some of this stuff out of my way. Oh, Clovis says she's doing the jean sew along with Angela. Awesome. I can't wait. Post pictures, definitely. Hey, Charlotte from Kentucky. How are you, girl? Hey, Mary. All right. Okay, so let me just make sure the internet's on. Yeah, yeah, it's showing. I mean, it's a little stormy here, but right now it's kind of fine. But if you're having trouble connecting, just go ahead and log on and log back in. Okay, so some other stuff here. Let me show y'all. I actually found um, a new PDF pattern. I've recently been trying, you know, playing around with different types of the knits. And I want to get more into active wear, like making workout gear and workout clothes. Because now that I do specific things at the gym, I feel like, again, like I said, these t-shirts, it's like super uncomfortable. We do a lot of like pull-ups, push-ups, arms and bars and things. And this right here is not happening for me for moving my arms and lifting heavy weights and stuff. And so I always have to have a tank top for sure. And then I want something super stretchy so that I don't feel restricted. So I recently came across a free PDF pattern. Um, it's by So So Easy, S O S E W Easy, and it's called um, I don't know. I think it's just the Racerback Tank pattern. And I think it's only been up for like a week. It's a PDF pattern printed out. It's the bomb. I mean, of course, you're going to make your changes to it. This is one thing that I find when people are not familiar with working with patterns and adjusting them to their bodies. They feel like they're just going to buy a pattern that has great reviews and they're just going to pick their size and make it and it's going to fit them legit. Like, that's not how it works. So, of course, you still have to adjust to your body type. What I tend to do is I, I um, copy the pattern. So, even off a of PDF, I copy it onto another type of paper. I don't like to use tissue paper. Some people use, like, medical exam table paper. I can't use that stuff. I'm too... And if you find that this happens to you too, you may consider using um, either like a thin muslin or something that's like has a little more body to it that's not just the paper like this stuff. Because I've drafted some patterns before on paper and it has to be sturdy paper. Otherwise, I feel like I'm so rough with it. Like I just rip it. I, I don't know. And I think I get that from my grandmother because I remember being like eight years old and she was stretching out my pantyhose to go to church one morning and literally with her bare hands, she like ripped it to shreds. And she kept telling me, she's like, no, it was already like that. And I'm looking at her like, lady, that was not already like that. But anyways, I have big hands. I have big, strong hands and like thin stuff. I, I'm not delicate with it. I just like rip it. So if that's you, um, try using some other type of paper. There's like Swedish tracing paper I find has a little more body. And I've been rearranging stuff in here so I don't have everything right on hand. But I like something that's, it doesn't have to be fabric per se, but I do like it to have a little more drape than just like paper, like tissue paper. And so after I made the adjustments, look at the little tank I made from that pattern. Isn't it cute? Of course, I'm working on the neckline and using different types of things. 
Um, this was just fold over elastic and I'll be doing um, some tutorials on this going forward. But I only, I just used the serger to make this. Straight up just serge seams. But I had this like workout mesh kind of fabric and I was like, ah, we'll throw a little contrasting thing on there. Why not? So let me tell you, this racerback thing that I found, the P free PDF pattern by So So Easy. So S-O, like so, and then so like to sew, S-E-W, easy. Um... I put this thing on and I ran inside the house like before I even finished the neckline or the arms and I told my husband, oh my gosh, look at this. I had to make some adjustments. I always have to make this adjustment here where I have to take it in an inch. From here to the bust point is always too long like on most every pattern on me. I had to do that to that um, to the Pamela Leggett t-shirt one already. So here's another thing to know. Once you start trying out different patterns, if you see that on two totally different brands you had to make the same adjustment, Chances are you're probably going to have to make that adjustment every time, you know? So once you start making stuff for your own body, you easily start to see, like, what the changes are that you need to make to make them fit your own body. So, yeah, so super cute. It has a pleat back here, which is great because you have more fabric, but it gives you the space that you need down at the hip line. I haven't hemmed it yet. I just searched the bottom just to whatever to finish it off for now. But you get this nice wide and it's long enough to cover your butt. So if you have wide hips like I do, especially for working out, if you have on shorts or like um, I usually wear like capris, like workout capri pants, it covers everything, but it's still breezy and everything. I mean, I was super impressed. I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, so yeah, peep that free PDF pattern that they have on the So So Easy site. Super cool to use, just random contrasting fabric. So that's my little plug for the day. Super easy on the serger, no kidding. The, the part that's going to take you the longest is the binding. And I'm going to be doing tutorials on that, sharing some tips and tricks and what I found worked and what didn't work too well for me. So be on the lookout for that. And if it's something that you want, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know that you want to see this. Because after the live streams are over, I always go back and check out all the comments. I'll respond to whatever I need to respond to. And then I kind of will keep a tally of the stuff that people commented like, oh, we like this. We want to see that. And we'll go from there. Okay. It is. Chrissy says it's great for wearing with leggings. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look. That little pleat on the back brings it in, but then you get the open, wide open space for the hips. Seriously. And if anybody's wondering, like for my size, um, ooh, I want to say I did the large. Wait a minute. Let me check the pattern. Hold on. Because I think I graded in between three sizes for this one. I've been working on several different ones. I can't remember. Oh, let me see. Let me see, because I know sometimes that helps when you see somebody. Um, so this was the PDF, and it's like three pieces, seriously. The front, the back without the racer back, and then just the little racer back thing. It's super cool. Okay, so I, let me see. I think I just cut, it looks like I just cut the large and then made my adjustments. Um... Yep, size large. So I just cut the large. So if you think that you're kind of somewhere like my size-ish, go with the large. And it goes up to an extra large. This is the printed PDF pattern. And it goes small, medium, large, extra large. Okay? So that's it. The front, the back, and the racer back chunk here. So you can see this is the website. So-so-easy.com. And it's the racer back tank t-shirt. Check it out. I don't know those ladies over there. They're probably going to be like, why are there so many people coming to visit my site randomly? I'm sure they'll appreciate the plug. So, yeah, definitely super cute pattern. Give it a go and see what kind of adjustments you need to make, obviously, to make it fit on yours uh, or for your body. So that's that. Then I wanted to show you all, if you want to get into active wear, uh, sometimes it can be tough to find the fabrics. And I'm, I'm looking into maybe sourcing some good fabrics that I know tried and true that I have used before that will work fine to maybe do some kits. If you're interested in something like that where I kit together an online course with like um, the fabric that you need and a pattern and walk you through it on how to make it and stuff like that, let me know. But look at this. This is a fabric that I got and this is from Joann's. You can find this stuff in like your local fabric store at um, in like the active wear, dance wear department and stuff like that. Oh, I know. Michelle's like so much information. <laughs> Girl, there is so much. I was like, I have this ongoing list of tutorials. And so I told my husband, well, for these garment sewing ones, let me jot this stuff down for the sergers. And I mean, there's like 70 bullet points of 
tips or things to talk about. I'm like, oh my goodness, I have content for years. Oh, Vicky says, you're two seasons ahead of us. I love the thread show and tell where I would buy for sure. So, oh, kits, please. Okay, so some of y'all are saying you want the kits, you want the kits. Yeah, would love an online course for activewear. So, yeah. So, super stretchy. And um, you basically, I mean, if it's for workout gear, you definitely want it to stretch in both directions. And this can be confusing sometimes because I'll hear some people call, say it needs two-way stretch, meaning it needs to stretch this way and this way. So they say two-way stretch, right? But then you'll hear people referring to the same type of fabric and they'll say it needs four-way stretch. Like here, stretches this way, stretches this way, stretches this way. So it can be confusing because if you're using four-way stretch, then we know what you mean, right? It stretches in every direction, good. If you say two-way stretch, there are some fabrics that stretch 50%, 40% in one direction, and the other direction, they only stretch 10. But it depends on which one these, whoever the designer or the instructor is referring to. So that can be confusing. So for active wear, I would just say, grab it from selvage to selvage, pull. If it stretches and bounces back, that's one direction checked off. And then <laughs> along the lengthwise grain, stretch it and bring it back if it returns and it stretches as much as pattern is you're making calls for then you're good to go so that's like dance wear active wear a lot of times you'll see it together with like the bathing suit i mean this would make super cute like bathing suit shorts you know or a little tank to go with it um okay oh i see y'all liking that idea the kits and the online classes Ooh, this is another one from dear stella how gorgeous is this guava color if you can see it's like a tone on tone like really lightly you see these little like dotted 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 um curves this is another gorgeous stretch knit Again, the 95 cotton, 5% spandex. Nice bounce back. You see that? And I think, let me see if I have some of those stuff that um, I don't recommend. Let me see. Nope. This is Girl Charlie fabric that I got, I think, last year. It, it bounces back okay. Let's see what else we have in here. Do you like my big Ikea bins? This stuff holds so much. But I think I had some fabric in here that was not. Oh, oh my gosh, these things hold like 25 pounds of fabric. Okay. <laughs> wow, guess where this is from. And I think I've had this fabric for literally eight years. So notice, from selvage to selvage is going to have the most uh, stretch. This is the crosswise grain. So here's the selvage. So if I'm stretching along this way. Not too bad I thought it was gonna be worse but you see how it kind of stays extended yeah I don't like this too much like it doesn't bounce back like the others you know it just like it barely comes back in and I can I can see from the backside that I've stretched it out can you see how the top is wider than the bottom now after I've stretched it yeah that's not a good look you don't want to work with this stuff especially for pants or shirts that have sleeves like once you move your arms the elbow right there will stretch it out and it'll stay like you go like this and you'll see it bulging out or at your knees, maybe if you've had pants or clothes like that have done that in the past. So stay away from this kind of stretch. That doesn't really jump back too good, okay? But I think this is like cheapy, cheapy, the big W fabric. So not very good. I'll stay away from that. And if I come back here, you can probably see my little mock shorts, you guys. This is another pattern. These are like, I live in these shorts right now. They are another free PDF pattern. I didn't even realize this. I'm like, free PDF, PDF. So these are, um, thanks to my friend Sandy from the Crafty Planner. She told me about these, and then I did a search on uh, Instagram for the hashtag City Gym Shorts. They're by Pearl Soho. That's a shop in New York. I've been there a couple times. Gorgeous. Uh, it's a free PDF pattern. It comes in a bunch of sizes. And if you go on Instagram or do a search on Google or Facebook for hashtag City Gym Shorts, I mean, you'll see every, and you'll see little kids, they have a kid size too, and they have adults, um, sizes, all the sizes. I mean, you see like itty bitty girls, tweens, teens, to big curvy girls rocking the, and I was like, because I don't wear shorts, and I don't really know, I mean, I know why, because my thighs are huge, my hips are wide, and my thighs rub. So like, even if I have shorts that are kind of like down to here, Bermuda style shorts, my thighs rub, so like they just creep up, and it's so annoying to be like yanking down shorts, yanking down shorts, right? So my friend Sandy posted a picture she had them, and I was like, girl, is that pattern legit or not? 
And she told me, yes, you know, she sent me a picture of how she did some adjustments to hers. And you can tell from the picture that they're, I mean, they're little. They're shorty, short shorts. And I have long legs, but I also have wide hips and, um, and big thighs. So I was like, I have to make, the, look how cute. It all has bias binding. Ah, can you see that? I have to, I'm like going to hike up my leg up here. No, but like, can you see how it like, fl one goes over the other. So you do the front and then you like stitch them over the other. But you can pick any kind of fabric that you want to cut um, the bias strips from and finish trimming them off. It just has a simple elastic waistband. For elastic waistbands, I don't like to do them super tight. So I just, it's just enough to stay on my hips and stay. And I added, I mean, <laughs> this is how short they are. That, let me see if you can see. <laughs> okay, do you see how, I mean, they're a little bit longer than my fingertips. But I still have a good chunk of leg left to go. And I added a whole two inches. Two inches, yo, to the length of this thing, like that much, seriously. Um, so, yeah, if you don't like shorty, short shorts, uh, I suggest you add some to it. Oh, this purple fabric, do I have any left? It was a gauze fabric that I got, oh, my gosh, maybe three years ago when I did the that maxi skirt tutorial. I don't even know. This, this was like a chambray. I, it's like when I bought the same fabric. But anyways, it's like a super thin purple gauzy fabric. Oh my gosh, super breathable and amazing. And I thought, you know what? Let me just whip up this little prototype muslin. Um, of these city gym shorts, people, download the pattern, free PDF. So for me, if you're kind of wider at the hips and curvier, I don't really have a big butt. I don't have a butt at all, actually. But the rise, I have, I'm really short-waisted. So my waist is super high, and so I'm not going to, I don't wear the shorts all the way up top. So I added one inch to the rise to give myself some more space from where it comes up to the waistline. And then I added two inches to the length. And then I just did, I think the large. And it goes up, I think, a few more sizes. They're super comfy, straight up. And you, har I mean, even for big sizes, you don't need that much fabric. I didn't hardly use any. It's. I have to make like 73 of these. I live in Florida and this is seriously the only pair of shorts I own. My husband was like, and why did you only make one pair? I'm like, because I was just trying it out. But now that I'm obsessed, I live in these every day. So shout out to Sandy at the Crafty Planner. And of course, the Pearl Soho for providing us with the free PDF pattern. Um, it's a little bit tricky to like do it because I, it's like they don't really say like the seam allowance or account for it. But you know, they're shorts. They're going to fit you a little loose anyways. You know what I mean? So just... Cut out the pattern and try it. The bomb. Um, what I would suggest is not doing what I did. I use like white thread um, to stitch down a blue bias trim on it. Obviously, especially if um, if you struggle to keep it like right on the edge to make sure that you're catching it on both sides, just use a coordinating thread and you'll be straight good to go. Hey, Brie. What's up, girl? She says she's totally into making clothes. Um, so Valerie's asking where the free pattern is. Uh, I will put up a post. Let me write this down because I can't um, put up. Actually, I can put up a post because I can type a comment like the rest of y'all. Hold on. Um, right here. Ooh. And my little web browser saved the link for me. Okay, so here is the link for the Pearl Soho. And for those of you that are watching this after the fact and are not with us here live, I'm going to post uh, the City Gym Shorts in the description of the video so you can check it out. But yeah, do a search on Instagram. I mean, you'll see the amazing shorts that people are using, and a lot of them using it out of quilting cottons. If you are a quilter and you have leftover chunks, half yard, three quarters of a yard, play around with that stuff and turn it in. Okay, did you guys get the link? I'll post it again, just because I know that the comments kind of fly by. Wow, I'm talking quite a lot. I'm like getting all into it. I'm like, oh, and I got this. I'm a little bit crazy, so don't mind me. Um... <laughs> Awesome, Shanika says she downloaded it. Girl, you could totally rock those shorts, and I bet you you got some cute fabrics on hand to make it out of, too. Okay. So, yeah. So, the link for the info on the shorts, I just posted it. Again, they're called City Gym Shorts by Pearl Soho. And Pearl is spelled P-U-R-L, like knit and pearl, like of knitting. Okay. So, yeah, I had to add some, stitch, some, some length to it for sure. <laughs> hey, Denise. Okay, great. So, anyways, workout stuff, I've been cracking out some shorts, what else did I make? I mean, I've made several things, and I told my husband, you know, this is something that I need to, like, talk about in videos, because 
and I get this a lot because I'm on both sides. So I quilt and I make garments. So on the quilter side, if I have quilters that wanted to do garments, they're just like, oh no, garment sewing requires so much precision. And then when you talk to a, a seamstress or somebody who just makes clothes, they're like, oh, quilting, no way. That requires too much precision. I'm like, why does the other one think that the other one requires more precision? Now, as a perfectionist, I will say, by far, quilting requires more precision. <laughs> by far. In garment sewing, you have massive seam allowances. There's so much wiggle room. Like, in quilting, we have to, like, match up the raw edges super good and make sure that the threads of the fabric underneath are right. In garment sewing, no. You can get away with a ton of stuff, okay? So, yeah. So, if you're a quilter or you make, like, little home projects and gift stuff and everything... I'm going to be working on videos to kind of pull those of you to the other side. Because I told my husband, I'm like, I mean, I'm fast in quilting and I can make a quilt in a day. Not everybody can make a quilt in a day. But, like, you can be slow and make a shirt in a day in less. I mean, that that's Racerback Tank, literally, I'm not even kidding. What, I mean, it takes time, right, to print out a pattern or copy it and trace it and make your adjustments. Fine, give yourself a day or two to do that. Once you have a pattern that legit fits you to your size, you've tried it, you've made, a, uh, made one up and you like it, it's like less than 10 minutes to cut the fabric and I can sew it on the serger even faster than that. Like in 15 minutes, you have a top that's been sewn together and all you have to do is find another hour, maybe at the most, if you want to be super, super precise with attaching your binding to it, like the armholes and binding it up. And I'm like, that's it. Like in less than two hours, I can have a new top. Yeah, you can't do that in quilting. In less than two hours, you can't have a new quilt top. And, and even if you do, it's just a quilt top. You can't do anything with it. So, seriously, garment sewing is where it's at. Uh, anyways, off my little soapbox there. Uh, let's see. Yvonne says, awesome. She wants to come on over to the other side. So, yeah. So, I'm going to be trying out different patterns. If you have any amazing patterns that you just are like, oh, I know that a ton more people would love to see you do a review or a video or something on that, um, leave me a comment. I want to check it out because I'm uh, into the researching phase. I mean, I have so many patterns. But specific ones that I want to try and things that I find that will be easy enough for beginners to tackle, that you won't have a complete mess on your hands after you're done and, and, and get completely discouraged, right, about continuing on to make another garment after that one. And that also is kind of a, a basic enough or, or regular enough that a lot of different body types and different um, styles of fashion can rock and wear, right? Okay. Oh, good. Shanika's suggesting already a McCall's pattern. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Kathleen would say something like that. She's talking about, is that moonshine? Why is it that every time we have one of these mason jars in our hand, I mean, I could be at the gym, we could be at the park, and people are like, moonshine? And we're like, no. Um, no, just some water with lemon slices and some strawberries in it. <laughs> We're farmers, man. That's all we have. The glasses in my house, if you come over for dinner, this is what you're drinking out of. The smaller ones, but this. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, serger. We're going to do some stuff on the serger. Um, and for the serger one, I'm going to whip out my old, old, old 19. It was not that old. I was, I was three. Um, my 1986 serger. So those of you that have like hand-me-downs or, or sergers that maybe you've in, uh, inherited, yeah, that is the word in English, inherited from family members or something, or maybe you just have had it there or somebody gave it to you, whatever. Um, I'll show you how to uh, do, you know, work with that as well, as, as well as the air threading one. Carla Lisa, you decided to join us. Girl, I've been chatting all about you all night. <laughs> I, I was telling them that you told me about the um the ginger pa jeans patterns. I was telling them how you wear everything, you know, to the retreats, all your outfits, all handmade, um, and that you um, swear by that pattern that you've made it before. Uh, so I told everybody that I'm going to try that one because I trust your word. You make cute clothes, girl. All right. Yeah, so Brittany's asking if I can teach them how to use the sergers. For sure, that's one of the, the upcoming videos coming up. Now... Before we get to the giveaway, because it's almost going to be 10 o'clock at night here in the U.S. Look, can you imagine? I was always thinking, like, if my studio was part of my house, my husband would come in and be like, you need to shut up. But um, luckily, it's a separate building, so I can be in here with my madness cracking and laughing. Ah, my little cackling laugh, and we're all good. Ooh, Debbie says she's interested in making some leggings to save herself some money. Hayden is a hey, girl. 
did you enjoy your little trip to Florida? Um, <laughs> she says she made a maritime top by Liesl and Co. with the Coral Deer Stella knit. Ooh, her first knit garment, and she really liked how it came out. Um, super beginner friendly. That's awesome to hear. So that would be cute. So those of you who are looking for a simple little knit top, she says the Maritime Top by Liesl and Co. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Hayden. So now I have an idea before we get to um, the giveaway of the Kinfolk Fabrics. So here's my idea. When I do these live streams, not every time, of course, you guys know I have like no organizational and time management skills. Um, I kind of just go... I wing everything, right? Um, so I can't be like, every Tuesday we're going to do this. That's just, um, no. I can't do it anymore. That's not how I work these days. I'm just like, what do I feel like doing today? So here's what we're going to do. Because I have a ton of fabric and I want to get through it, and a lot of it is knit fabrics. Actually, speaking of knit fabrics, do you, those of you that have been following me for a while, do you remember the, um, the trip that I took to L.A. like three or four years ago and I bought fabrics at this place called Fabric Planet? And they were selling like fabric for a dollar a yard, but if you bought five, uh, if you bought six yards, they gave it to you for five bucks, so like eighty-eight cents a yard. I remember when I opened up that suitcase. I did a video on YouTube, so if you do it, if you go on YouTube in my channel and look up like fabric haul, LA shopping fabric haul or something, you'll see that. It was insane. Okay, I mean, I tried to spend money on. Hold on, guys, because I think, oh, that's what it was. The battery um, charger plugged off, but it was saying that the connection was a little bit low. Okay, so I should still be on. Good. Um, so, yeah, you see, a bunch of you do remember that trip. Okay, I tried, tried to spend money. But imagine, at $0.88 cents per yard, I spent like $45, and I had a suitcase full. So I remember calling my husband that night, and he was like, um, I checked your credit card, like the checking account. He's like, you didn't spend anything. I'm like, I tried. I swear, I bought a bunch of fabric. And he's like, if you're going all the way out to L.A., you better buy fabric. So my friend and I had to go back out the next day and, like, literally buy a, another suitcase on the street of downtown L.A. to fill it up with fabric. And I spent, like, $70. It was, like, nothing. And I left with, like, it was, like, fabric on fabric on fabric. Anyways, here's one of those fabrics that I bought out there, the ones that was, like, a dollar a yard if you buy six uh, we give it to you for five dollars it was insane so this is like poly jersey knit and it's nice and sheer it's i mean if i hold it up like this it's kind of sheer but on the body with a dark bra or something i think for florida especially since it's polyester and eh, you know but it's thin enough that it's it would make a cute t-shirt slinky long sleeve shirts and i've made shirts with this fabric because i ended up buying it i think in like three or four different colors anyways <laughs> my six yards of my 88 cents a yard when you're starting this is what you need to be getting because you have to be realistic and um, just acknowledge the fact that you're gonna waste fabric you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna have to dump some of the things that you make because it's just not I mean you can always use them to sleep in but those are the kind of bargains that you need to holler at if you live in a city Philly LA New York you need to hit up these places a dollar a yard and pick up some stretch knit so that you can try out some sample t-shirt patterns and stuff like that. Now here's one that I bought. I don't even know where I got this, but obviously it's like cheapy. It has good stretch return. And um, usually if I buy online, I try to make sure, you know, I read obviously what the description is. And I go off of that um, to buy it. But I just pre-washed this and it is like garbage. I mean, it is already fuzzy. It has a nice feel to it. It's nice and airy, but it's already fuzzing. So I'm glad that I wasn't too lazy and I pre-washed it because this is going to be like a night shirt or just like a whatever tank to just be here because I can't, I'm not going to spend the time, you know, to make one and then it's like fuzzy looking. It's not, uh -uh. I don't like it. So yeah, that's that. So here's my idea. I'm going to pick out some fabrics from my stash, like one fabric at some, some live streams. This is just an idea. And I'll be like, okay, so this is about a yard and a half. And it's a rayon jersey. Nice quality, good stuff. Nice stretch return. And then I'll ask you guys, what do you think this fabric would look good? If I turned it into whatever it is. So then I'll take suggestions of either patterns 
or actual projects. So like a tank top or a whatever, whatever this, or give me a name of a pattern that would look cute or that would be good. And it's something that I can make using only a yard and a half of rayon jersey. So if you have any ideas or suggestions for this one, I'm going to start off with this one since it's pretty neutral. It's just a navy blue. Uh, and there's only a yard and a half. So let me know in the comments what you would suggest that I turn this navy rayon jersey into. And then after the, the live stream ends, I'll look through. If there's any patterns, I'll check it out. Um, if there's any project suggestions, I'll pick the one I want to try. I'll make it. And then we'll see if it's a success or an epic fail. In another future live stream, once I tell you, hey, remember that rayon jersey? Look what I turned it into, okay? You can see it's a kind of sheer. It's nice, bouncy. And there's only a yard and a half now. Okay, so I will take your suggestions. Ooh, the halo, halo or halo pattern can be a simple dress or a tank. All right, I'm gonna. I'm excited to look through these after this thing is over, so that I can check them out. Okay, and for now, since clearly I've just been talking about garden sewing fabric and haven't been bundling my orders, I'm going to give away this big old bag. So if you want to get in on the giveaway of this massive bag of kinfolk scraps, and I'll take some out. Why not? We can go over all different prints. There's a lot of fabric in here, though. Um, go ahead and leave, uh, well, I guess I can grab from the comments that have been posted here, but just go ahead and tell me what you would like to use the Kinfolk fabric for. Like, if you won this, what would you use it for? So here's one of the prints. It's okay. Let's see where the other one. I have the opposite of that one. And you see they're good-sized scraps. They're not little. Maybe I should fold these up nicely. I was just like, scrap piece, throwing it in a bag. And then I started to fill up, and I was like, you know, this would make a great giveaway. <laughs> this is another one of the prints. And now I'm sold out of the fabric, I think. I may have one bundle left. Um, but you can check craftygemini.com slash shop, and you'll see it there. Check out the one that you're interested in, and you'll see at the bottom. If you try to add it to your card and it says sold out, then it's sold out. But, um... Uh, if you want to buy it by the yard, my friend Laura sells it in her online shop, and that's Dragonfly Quilt Works on Etsy. And actually, I shall include a link for you right here, because now that I can do that super quickly. Um, all right, right here. And she sells it by the yard. So if you're wanting one or two prints or whatever, you can have a look there. Uh, kinfolk fabric by the yard. And let me know if you got that link. It should show up or not. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it looks like it posted. All right, so that's another one of these. And if I can fit more in the big bag, I probably will. This is another one. more little strips you see they're like off cuts like whatever you know if I needed to cut off a chunk to kind of straighten stuff off or but they're big here's a chunk of the floral that's in the collection and you guys know me the fluff of the fabric starts getting me like of all the cut edges okay look at this one how cool would that be to follow with a walking foot for free motion quilting super cute and easy and then we have the negative one of that too so that's the white with the black spots and then this is the black with the white there's some hot pink chunks in here that i did for my corazon quilt which is one of the ones that um was displayed at quilt market but that hot pink and you can see that it's not a solid it's from the hatch collection by timeless treasures so that's like their basics and it comes in different colors so this is the black and white hatch this is not part of my true collection like the ones that i designed but it's this same hatch thing but in black and white because you can see the little lines okay um but I used uh, that print in one of the quilts, so it's going to be in there, too. Here's another print. More of this one. This is good chunks here. Look at this so far. Nice. I try not to put in any, like, super little bitty-bitty ones, but if you're going to be... I mean, this is probably the skinniest of them all, you know? And it's still a good size strip. 
This is the one that I used that I hand carved the stamp and then um, I stamped the arrow stamp in different directions and we turned into that print. All right, so a lot of you are getting in on that giveaway. So awesome. I cannot believe I've been on for 50 minutes. I told my husband, I was like, 30 minutes, you think? He's like, yeah, that's plenty. <sighs> this is what happens when you give an extrovert the camera. I just, this is, this is how I got in trouble as a kid in school because I just wouldn't shut up. <laughs> At least now I get to talk about fun stuff like fabrics. Okay, more and more, more of this. Another bigger chunk. Super cute. Oh, yeah. Lisa says for um, English paper piecing projects. Absolutely. Because you don't need much for those smaller scrappy projects. This one, eh, it's a little thin, but whatever. That end is a little thicker. I'll leave it in there. Why not? More strips, more stuff, and still more. Okay, so I'm going to throw these back in the bag. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's a good bit of scrap. So, anyways, after this is over, which I'm about to get off in a second because 51 minutes, holy cow. Um, I will pick a name and then I will announce it on my Facebook page tonight before I go to bed. So, if you want to stay up, if not, you can catch it tomorrow once I post it. And then whoever the winner is, I'll have you um, email us so we can get your mailing address and then we can ship that out to you. And then I will look through there and see what y'all suggested for my rayon jersey. We'll check that out, and I need to get back to bundling my fabrics before I go to bed. See if I can be in bed by midnight tonight. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for joining me, and um, check out the links that I've included there. I'll include, I'll go back and check. I'll add Laura's link there, and what was the other one, the Pearl Soho shorts. I'll go ahead and add them to the whole description thing so you can just find them easily instead of having to scroll through all the comments. Thank you for all the hearts and the happy faces and the thumbs ups. And I will see you all in another video. Bye.